Many of you saw last week's presidential debate, but this is not going to be a political video. I found an article at money.com that fact checks what was said at the debate concerning the financial aspects of it. This article fact checks each candidate on four economic issues that they discussed. The first economic issue that the candidates discussed was inflation. Trump said, quote, inflation's killing our country, end quote, and also suggested that food prices have, quote, doubled, tripled, and quadrupled, end quote. Biden said, quote, if Trump is reelected, we're likely to have a recession and inflation is going to increasingly go up, end quote. The first question of the debate centered on inflation and the pain felt by consumers, putting Biden on defense. He blamed corporate greed and the economic conditions he inherited from Trump. To be fair, the FTC has found that price gouging has existed long after the pandemic ended. Companies such as Walmart, Target, Walgreens, and Amazon have been pressured to lower prices and have done just that. However, as Trump noted, the annual inflation rate was low when Biden took office. It was 1.4% in January 2021. Inflation peaked at 9.1% in June of 2022, but it's back down to 3.4% now. Trump, for his part, exaggerated how bad inflation has been. Food prices, for example, have not doubled, let alone quadrupled. They're up about 23% over the past four years. While it's true that inflation has soared during Biden's presidency, global economic conditions and central bank policy have a greater impact on inflation than the actions of any particular country's leader. Also, Inflation is hardly a problem limited to the U.S. Globally, headline inflation rose about 9% in 2022, according to the International Monetary Fund. Later in the debate, Trump said inflation, quote, blew up under Biden's leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, end quote. While government spending likely contributed to inflation, it's important to note that both presidents advanced stimulus relief in response to the pandemic. Biden has approved $4.3 trillion of new 10-year borrowing so far in his presidency, which is only about half as much as Trump approved in his four years. Will inflation climb if Trump gets another term? Well, maybe. Biden's claim is based on a letter signed Tuesday by 16 Nobel Prize winners who are concerned about the economic consequences of another Trump administration. They fear that Trump's, quote, fiscally irresponsible budgets, end quote, will reignite inflation. Economists also say that a Trump proposal to impose a 10% blanket tariff on imports would lead to higher prices, but overall it's impossible to predict with any certainty where inflation is headed in the next four years. Tariffs are actually a hidden tax that increase the cost of goods that consumers purchase. So a 10% tariff on things that you normally buy is an extra 10% tax, but because it increases the cost of goods by 10%, that's also a 10% inflation rate. The next issue they discussed was the economy. Biden said, quote, we have the fastest growing economy in the world, end quote, and claimed, quote, the economy was flat on its back, end quote, when he became president. Trump said, quote, we had the greatest economy in the history of our country, end quote, during his presidency. Economists often judge the strength of the economy under a president looking at the growth of real gross domestic product, or GDP. Real GDP growth ranged from 2.5% to 3% during Trump's first three years in office, before decreasing to negative 2.2% in 2020. 
Real GDP growth has been stronger under Biden, but that includes 5.8% growth in 2021, which was a recovery year. On the economy, Trump also touted the stock market's performance during his presidency. However, the S&P 500's growth under Biden is at 43% compared to 35% for the same period of Trump's time in office. And the Dow has had similar results as well. Biden and Trump went back and forth throughout the debate on jobs, with Biden pointing out that the unemployment rate peaked at 15% under Trump. His point lacked the context that unemployment spiked to that level in April 2020 at the height of the COVID-19 shutdown. Trump countered that, quote, the only jobs Biden created are for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs. They're bounced back from the COVID, end quote. In reality, the strength of the labor market has been impressive under Biden with job numbers routinely exceeding expectations despite forecasts of a recession. In May, the unemployment rate was only 4%, which is considered full employment. One reason the Federal Reserve has been cautious regarding interest rate cuts is because job growth has been so strong, as has the U.S. economy in general. As for the unemployment rate, it has been at 4% for longer than any other president in decades. The next issue they discussed was taxes. Trump said he led Congress to pass, quote, the largest tax cut in history, end quote, boasting that, quote, nobody ever cuts taxes like us, end quote, and saying Biden, quote, wants to raise everybody's taxes by four times, end quote. Biden said, quote, we have to make sure that we have a fair tax system, end quote, repeating his claim that nobody who makes under $400,000, quote, had a single penny increase in their taxes, end quote, which will, quote, be the case again, end quote, if he's elected. Trump was referring to the Tax Cuts and Job Act of 2017, which drastically changed the U.S. tax system. Among other changes, the TCJA nearly doubled the standard deduction, reduced income tax rates, increased the child tax credit, nixed personal exemptions, and slashed corporate income tax rates. TCJA was a big deal to be sure. One analysis found the law reduced the average American's taxes by roughly $1,600 though households making between $308,000 and $733,000 benefited the most. But it was not the largest tax cut in history, according to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Another thing to note is that more than 60% of the tax cut benefits went to those in the higher income brackets. Many of those TCJA provisions are set to expire at the end of 2025, teeing up a major fight for the next president. On Thursday, debate moderators pressed Trump on his plans to extend and expand them, asking why corporations and the wealthy should, quote, pay even less in taxes than they do now, end quote, given the nation's record deficit. To give you an example, billionaires alone pay an average tax rate of 8.2%. That's a lower tax rate than I pay, and it's a lower tax rate than many Americans pay. In response, Trump said that his tax cuts, quote, spurred the greatest economy that we've ever seen just prior to COVID, end quote. Biden, meanwhile, vowed Thursday to, quote, fix the tax system, end quote, though he didn't go into too much detail. His proposed budget floats several tax changes of its own, including expanding the child tax credit and providing home buyers with $10,000 in tax credits. According to a June blog post from the Tax Foundation, a tax policy nonprofit, Biden's 2025 budget 
would raise taxes by about $4.4 trillion on a gross basis and, quote, substantially increase marginal tax rates on investment, saving, and work, end quote. Without these changes, the government would collect $62.6 trillion, meaning Biden is suggesting a tax increase of 7%, nowhere near the 300% tax hike Trump mentioned. And Biden's tax hikes would be paid for largely by wealthy Americans. He's repeatedly said that anyone making less than $400,000 won't pay higher taxes. The fourth and last economic issue that they discussed was Social Security. Biden said Trump, quote, wants to get rid of Social Security, end quote, and, quote, thinks that there's plenty to cut in Social Security, end quote. Biden suggested an increase in payroll taxes for higher earners to keep the program solvent. Trump said Biden, quote, is going to single-handedly destroy Social Security, end quote, by giving benefits to, quote, millions of people who are pouring into our country, end quote. Social Security is a tricky subject because neither political party wants to be the one to alienate millions of older voters by cutting their beloved and heavily relied upon benefits. But the program is in a funding crisis. Unless Congress acts, Social Security's trust fund reserves will run out in 2035, at which point it'll only be able to pay out 83% of benefits. An immediate across the board benefits cut would happen. When asked during the debate how to keep Social Security solvent, Biden suggested making wealthy Americans, quote, begin to pay their fair share, end quote. As it stands, employers and workers both pay 6.2% of their wages up to $168,600. This year, millionaires reached that threshold in March. Biden's plan would move the needle if, for instance, the payroll tax were to be applied to earnings over 250000 in addition to earnings below the current threshold, the trust funds would make it until 2046, according to the Congressional Budget Office. On Thursday, Biden appeared to suggest he'd raise payroll taxes for people earning over $400,000 a year, which would change the calculations. Trump's position on Social Security has changed recently. In March, he told Breitbart that he, quote, will never do anything that will jeopardize or hurt Social Security or Medicare, end quote. But those comments followed a CNBC interview in which he said, quote, there is a lot you can do in terms of entitlements, in terms of cutting, end quote. He has not put forth a formal proposal on how to fix Social Security. During the debate, Trump likened the Social Security funding problem to immigration, implying that the current president is providing benefits to, quote, all of these people coming in, end quote. But according to the Social Security Administration, only, quote, lawfully present non-citizens of the United States who meet all eligibility requirements, end quote, are able to qualify. In addition, people generally have to work for 10 years and be at least 62 years old to claim Social Security benefits. Social Security actually could be solvent by getting rid of the tax cap. As for getting rid of Social Security, Project 2025 states just that. Project 2025 proposes huge cuts to Social Security and Medicare. Former President Trump is aware of this, and many of his former administration officials are part of the whole process. Project 2025 is a 900-page outline from the Heritage Foundation identifying their goals for the next conservative president. I'll link Project 2025 in the description below so that you can read it for yourself. Be warned, though, it's a 900-page document. So no matter which candidate you prefer, the facts don't lie. 
I hope that this economic fact check has given all of you something to consider. Until the next video, take care and remember that your money matters.